So to do a valve shim adjustment, you really just need these real simple tools. 17 millimeter wrench, that's gonna turn the crankshaft. A really cheap, small screwdriver. It's small there, so that way you can pop them out. I'll show you how to use that. This is the valve adjuster tool. It says Honda on it, but I think this is the, uh, the off-brand. It was 20 bucks on eBay. And either tweezers or really small uh, pliers to, to pull the shims out. And this is really important. Your, your valve shim, your guide, uh, whatever this is, it needs to go down to, I don't know if you can z see that, 0.0015. And these are really, really thin. These are like paper thin, but you need them that small. 1015, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, a lot of them start at 5, so you need ones that have that. And then I'll uh, show you how to do it. So I assume you can follow the manual and take off the tank and everything you need to get it down to this point. I've removed the valve cover off the top, which exposed both, both of the, the camshafts. Uh, this is a dual overhead cam, a CB900, it's the same for a CB1000 and also a CB750, mostly from the mid 70s to the, to the early 80s. Um, this is where the alternator cover is, I've removed it, you need to remove it. There's a, a gasket on there that you probably have to replace and this is where you turn the engine for each of the positions. Um, the only one that really matters is this exhaust cam, and right now this is at 6 o'clock. It's pretty hard to see, but there's a tiny little notch on it, and some of them are marked with a yellow stripe. Um, if you follow the uh, climber's manual, it's A at 3 o'clock, B, C, and D. Okay. okay, so some people also have a question on how you actually measure the distance. So again, this is the number four exhaust. If you, I'm going to point with my little screwdriver here. This is the camshaft itself. This is the shim. These are the things that we're going to replace. And it's sitting inside a bucket, which right now in its up position, the bucket is really easy to move. So we're looking for a clearance between 0.004 and 0.006 between here. This one has not been adjusted yet, but I want to show you. Um, so for example, here's 0.004. Does not fit. 0.003 does fit. So now 0.003 is the measurement of this one. So the fact that I can do this with 0.003 is what I'll use for all my calculations. Okay, so this is how you get it out. Uh, when it's in this position, it's really easy to move these buckets. So I like to move the, uh, the bucket to the, the front so I can pry this out easy. This is the, uh, the tool that you stick, stick in between here. Sometimes they spin so you can kind of hold it in place just while it gets tension. Um, because there's oil in here, it's pretty easy It's pretty easy to do, but you do have to put some pressure on it. Uh, you're going to hold the tool really tight to this as it compresses. I don't know if you can see that in the video. It compresses both of those buckets down to the ground. You have to be really careful not to turn your engine at this point because the intake valves are also in at the piston, and now you've just compressed the exhaust valve, so they're really close to touching. If it spins, you'll bend them and basically need a whole new engine, so you don't want to do that. Um, Take this little screwdriver, this is why I like this cheap little screwdriver, it fits right in between here and pops it up, it's ready to be extracted like a tooth. You just grab it with your little plier and pull it out, I'm going to replace it with the correct one, verify, so you don't want to do this twice, this is the right number, stick it back in, kind of falls in place, guide it in with whatever you got which is pretty much going to just be this little screwdriver and your pliers. Kind of seat it back in. It kind of clicks a little bit. And then when you release the tool, make, sometimes you'll hear it pop, like if you don't have it in correct because it's just the spring coming up. But you got to make sure that the buckets are, that the shims are in the buckets and everything uh, is in place. This one looks like it's perfect. You can also do a quick turn of the engine so you can see it ro rotating and you'll see it press them down. And that'll also verify that the seats are in place. There it goes. See it compress it down, goes through its stroke, and then comes back up. So that's it. We're done.